Oh, no, okay. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> so we'll know it's live once this pops up here. There it is. Oh, then okay. it's live. We are live. Yes, we are. And type for me. <laughs> Get moving here in a second. Okay. I'm reading. <laughs> okay. All right. And I just got to share it Oh my gosh, there's 52 people on already. Oh my goodness. Hello. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> We're excited to have you once we get it going. <sighs> Energies, right? Yes. Is that what I feel? It's all this energy. Oh, yeah. Ooh. The collective. Okay. So, namaste, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of N5D Facebook Live. My name is Craig Prescott, owner of N5D.com. And today we're going to be talking about how the current cosmic energies are affecting us spiritually and physically. And I'm joined today by a friend of mine, Carrie Ann Sanders, uh, who attended our last drum circle, N5D Beach Meetup. Rather, I'm sorry. And it was fantastic. So, Carrie, uh, say hi to everyone and tell a little about you. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Carrie Sanders. I am an enthusiast, as you all are, part of the Starseed family, this new awakening. Well, for me, it's new. Um, I've been dabbling in the energies and human design and astrology and tarot and um, gene keys, sacred seals. I mean, I've dipped a little bit into everything, double dipped. Sorry if you're not the double dipper type, <laughs> right? Uh, and then I started realizing how many things started relating and they all come together mm -hmm. and relate. So I wanted to bring it to the table and Greg thought it was a great idea to share with the rest of you. And I'm here to kind of guide you mm -hmm. with what I found. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the information that I'm about to give out too. It's just in the sense of the direction that it all started leading together. Okay. So what I did was um, I posted and I'm posting it right again right now. There's a link here for um, astro.com. And at some point, you might want to download your birth chart. And even if it's not right now, you can go back and listen and check out some of the things that we're going to be talking about because um, it'll all make sense a lot more once um, you have your birth chart in front of you. Right. But it'll probably all fall together anyway before that. So, my last N5D Facebook Live, I was talking about vertigo and how many of us are going through this vertigo phase. Mm -hmm. And what I'm noticing is that there are certain cosmic connections and other people that have been uh, tuning in and making comments have also been saying the same thing about how they're feeling this. I remember there was one quote that said, this one woman said that she was getting vertigo three days before and three days after a full moon. So that's one of the things we wanna talk about. Now, Carrie came over yesterday she had this plethora of charts all <laughs> over the place. I uh, like to pin out everything that I see. And unfortunately, I don't own that many uh, computers and so many tabs, you just get lost. Mm -hmm. So I tend to print it all out and tack it to the walls. And he had a, a, a lot of enough boxes to, yeah. to not destroy walls. So yay. But it was amazing and fun. Um, I just want I was, show, I was showing Greg, because uh, that's what I do. I show. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Anyway, so the energies that the, the, soul, the sun is producing is correlating within us. We have meridian lines um, that run through our bodies that are centered with the chakras. And each chakra represents a planet. And where the planet is at within the chakra, you need to look into your chart and what um, planet or whatever, whatever, what planet was it in that, um, that house. Mm -hmm. And that's going to tell you which area of your life these energies need to be put towards. So it also with it, the planet and the energies that are coming from the sun and hitting those planets and spe uh, those specific uh, zodiacs, you can check into the zodiac of that as well of that house. And that's going to give you more detail about how these energies interplay into your life and in your body and without. 
Also, uh, back to the human design. Mm -hmm. Now, that correlates specifically to certain energy lines that are within you. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and go pull up, I think it's humandesignamerica.com or vice versa, something like that. And you can put in your birth details, just like you would your natal chart, and it'll give you your human design. It's amazing how you will see the correlation with the planets and the energy lines that you have that are blocked, meaning subconsciously like suppressed. And that's what you have to work through in order to open or unlock, like it'd be a life experience or an emotion, something in that sort within those areas of the solar plexus, of the sacral center, of the heart chakra, the crown, all of it relates, everything does. There's no separation, it is one. And the quicker that the majority see the correlations, the quicker you can heal your body and we can come together in a bigger collective with calm <laughs> and harmony. So we were trying to figure out about this whole vertigo thing. Mm -hmm. And what Carrie discovered was that there's, um, the, there's a cancer full moon and cancerian energies. I'm sorry. There's an Aries, Aries, full, Aries moon. full moon right. tomorrow. Right. Well, it's actually today. Tonight. Tonight. It's yeah, Thursday. Tonight. It was yesterday, today, and tomorrow, actually. Sorry. I've been planning and working yeah. all day. <laughs> but tell us how this all ties in with um, the Cancerian energies and the Aries full moon and Mars and everything. Oh. Because it'll help you guys figure out why this is happening to many of us having these uh, well, vertigo symptoms. We had used um, Greg's human design uh, yesterday in order to figure out while he was experiencing the vertigo. Now, um, as far as the the crown chakra, his his moon, so the crown represents the sun and the moon, and his moon happens to be in Cancer, and so not his his not his moon. I'm sorry, his uh, his moon house is ruled by ruled by Cancer, okay. and that represented his vertigo. So within his human design and the chakras, because the um, the, the the crown would represent the un, the swaying in, in the head, the thoughts, the the roundabouts of ideas and, and emotions. Okay. So this is what I'm looking at basically, uh, and I don't know if you guys oh no, it's not coming up very well. No. Yeah. Anyway, um, I can get some of these. I have the little yeah have the little things over here. But anyway, um, there's a birth chart, and then there's um, planetary positions house positions and stuff okay. that we're looking at. So as the as a head design here, the head center, you have you have inspiration, anxiety, mental pressure, and then you have the Anja center, which is the, con the uh, conceptulation. And then also you have the throat center right here. And then over here you have, this is the G or the identity, the self center or the heart. And then over here, the heart's right here, right below it. And then you have uh, the solar plexus. I'm sorry, this is all backwards to me. Some of my fingers are distracting. I probably should just leave my finger out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's only told me they're glittery, so they're distracting. But um, anyways, so you have the root center here. And you see these energy lines that are, they're, they're all blank right here in this mm -hmm. one, right? So these are all the energies that flow within your body and clearing them will release and help you flow energetically and release your cosmic DNA that's been locked up. Because mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's those subconscious, or you can see them here. This is my chart, okay? Some of it, the printer didn't get it all, but some of it. Anyway, so you can see right here, the black represents the conscious and the red represents the unconscious in this chart. So meaning that I, sub in my subconscious know what these certain, um, each number represents a gateway, is mm -hmm. what they're called in the human design. So each energy has its own gateway, and in that gateway has an explanation of what you would be experiencing, and you're gonna go, whoa, how did it know? They all relate. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that, you know, as you guys know that I'm working on, is I want to unlock all the codons in my DNA, mm -hmm. and activate my past, current, and future strands of DNA so I can heal myself and others right. in humanity's best interest. So that's, that's one thing that Carrie's gonna be helping me do um, through this uh, human design, where, like where she said these, you know, these blockages are. 
you know, these, these areas that um, have blockages, once you open that up, basically opens you up to uh, everything and your true spiritual potential. And I think eventually you're going to be <laughs> offering a service for this, but right now um, I'm her guinea pig. Right now, right now I'm just trying to establish and my own foundations within it. I like to unlock all the little keys faster. So if I find how to's using oils, using stones, um, thoughts, you know, t tap, brain tap, I am all about it, quantum healing. So I just want to learn how to release these quicker. And so, yes, Greg's going to be my first guinea pig. So um, we were talking about vertigo, and um, there, there, there is an Aries full moon. Now, Aries is ruled by Mars. Right. Ruled by Mars. The god of war, Aries, the god of war. And usually if you see Mars on your, your birth chart, it's usually, if it's uh, opposing something, it's it's fighting it, definitely. But um, Mars, you were saying also, is the solar plexus. Right. Mars is the solar plexus. So that's where you're going to be getting, like, your drive. Uh -huh. Okay. And your intuition, that knowing, mm -hmm. um, and the forceful, the force behind it. So you're going to... It's going to be, it's not that you're not feeling it throughout your, the rest of your body. Of course you are. But if you're like anybody else that is experiencing this spiritual enlightenment, this awakening process, fighting yourself, this opens it up so that you don't have to fight yourself so much, mm -hmm. <laughs> so hard. Um, you recognize what you're going through. Like, oh, why am I feeling this in my stomach? Why is this turning so much now? It's well, because... You've got these energies coming through from whatever planet's pushing it in your specific house. That's what you need to know because that's the area, business, career, finance, home, um, your reputation, all of that. Your houses give you the specific details into where those energies are going and why because we're clearing. We're in a clearing house part mm -hmm. of, of, of the uh, ascension. Um, in the next three months, I've been told by my higher self and and all that you know that we're right now it's a, it's a big focus and mm -hmm. game on about clearing where do you stand within your truth and what are you willing to do to get there mm -hmm. clear your shit yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, you guys know that the solar plexus you have the root chakra the sacral chakra and then the solar plexus your, your third chakra right below your heart chakra um, now Mars also controls well the, the Willpower. Yeah, well, it's not Mars. Is it Mars? Now, let me get this straight. I'm not sure if it's Mars or the solar plexus that controls the kidney, the bladder, pancreas. Mar okay, so Mars Mars rules the solar plexus. Okay. So that's where you're getting your self-esteem, your okay. uh, willpower, your emotional response, health boundaries, peace with yourself. It's, it's all physically associated with the digestive. Yeah. And you mentioned yesterday that it was involved with the process of the awareness of the wave that that kundalini as it goes around the chakras right okay yeah and how it flows through so, and then that's all part of the energy flow that we've been talking about right. and we're trying to work with right now i'm actually trying to find that i thought i brought it but apparently i did not i have this amazing little picture of how oh i have one it's sort of similar but not really mm -hmm. but <clears throat> on here it pretty much shows you the the um what is this? The okay, direction so it's a zodiac right. sign, yeah. and what direction each um, chakra runs. You can find all of this on Google Image, but be sure that you double check because some people just put stuff out there that's not right. <laughs> um, so, anyways, that so I'll tell you what's positive, what's negative. You know which one's yin, which one's yang, mm -hmm. within the flow. Okay. Now Mars also rules Aries and Scorpio, correct? Um, I see. No, I think it just has. Yeah, I think it just has. It. Um, it always has two. I don't know. I can not be sure on that one. I'm sorry. I'm just dabbling. I dabble into the astrology, the zodiacs. I'm getting stronger with it, but I'm not mm -hmm. a pinpoint on everything right now. What is it people need to be looking out for right now when they're looking at the the celestial skies and trying to figure out how how does how does what's going on above me affect me right now? Well. That's like where your, your needle chart would come in. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you gotta look at all of this that we're going through right now. I'm gonna direct to the, the audience. Okay. Um, with what we're 
going through right now is a bunch of transitions mm -hmm. and we are feeling the jolts society is seeing the results of these jolts um, and what we're supposed to be doing is taking these energies that are happening within us and also without on the outside mm -hmm. and we're supposed to be harmonizing the dark and the light so the light is the energies that we're receiving in our body to clear out these areas of distress and fear and trauma um, and put back in joy, bliss, and happiness and bring that to the outside so that the, the dark is, you know, lightened. So can you give an example of like what you would do personally if you noticed um, the full, full moon? What would be the first thing that you'd do if you knew a full moon was coming up? I would want to look at my natal positions to see. I would really want to see where my Mercury was. I would want to know where Neptune was, um, Chiron right now, Scorpio, because we're coming into Scorpio, and then what sign the, the moon was going into and what it transitioned out of. So you really want to look at your moon and your sun. Um, Mercury is always a good one, and, and Neptune to know as well, so that you, Neptune is the universe. So it's what's going on with, with all. Um, Right now, uh, Pluto is a good one as well. He's mysterious, uh, always, always back there, you know, testing, waiting, waiting. But he's up, he's up, and he's kicking ass in the ass, pretty much. He's tired. Of yeah, sorry. Pluto's <laughs> in Capricorn right now, and it's been yeah. basically bringing down money, government, and religion. Yes, and yes. Yeah, it's a really exciting thing to see and witness. Uh, do you know what each one of these planets really represent and uh, what they, you know, what the lesson is that we should get out of them? Well, they're, yeah, the, each one of them, they represent their own, um, their own energies. They do. Um, I have them in the slide next to me. Um, I can go over some of that. Okay. But really, when it comes to these energies, it's, there is a collective, true, um, what these energies do for the earth itself you can look at the uh, alignments and kind of base what's going on based off the solar flares the energy's bouncing back and forth mm -hmm. but as far as what you want to look for is in your chart it really is it's in your own chart because the way that the collective is going to heal is by you healing within and clearing out those energy lines that your mars is battling with your venus you know mm -hmm. your masculine your feminine it's a common you know um duality so yeah if you want to look that up i'll, yeah. I'll entertain the people here a little um so you know the the millisecond the fraction of a second that you were born that's your energy signature you can be have an identical twin that was born maybe three seconds later but those three seconds is almost like a completely different person three seconds completely different from that other person. That's a completely unique energy signature. So in the next stage of spiritual development, if we turn into say light bodies, that's how we'll recognize each other through our energy signatures. So you're not going to take this physical body with you. You'll be moving on as a light body and you'll see that, that glowing light of energy. And that's how we'll recognize each other. Now i um, getting back to Pluto and Capricorn. I've written a bunch of articles about that on N5D. And uh, it, Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008. It stays there until 2023. Pluto's known as the destroyer, and it will tear down everything that's not in humanity's best interest and give us the opportunity to build it back in humanity's best interest. And what it's going to do is tear down money, government, religion, politics, and all that stuff. Um, the last time Pluto was in Capricorn was in the 1700s during both the French and American revolutions. And if you look back, you know, just through the recent years since 2008, there's been revolutions going on all over the world. This is not a coincidence. Astrology shows us how these cycles of time repeat themselves. And I think what we're heading towards right now, and I just posted an article on the cult of Saturn, um, the cult of L, basically. Um, what we're looking at is that, similar to what Terrence McKenna said with this time wave zero theory, where he said time was spring, uh, spiraling towards the singularity, I think that's where we're spiraling towards too, is basically the end of time, the end of Kronos, the end of basically Saturn. So anyway, let's get back to, uh, you have the information there for each of those planets? I have some information on the planets. Yes, okay, cool, awesome. Um, 
on I, speaking of Saturn, which mm -hmm. I have pulled up, it is lunar Capricorn. Ta da! Mm. Well, oh, you know, man. it's the, also the root chakra. Yeah, it's goat, goat man's Saturn. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you think of goat man, you think of Satan also. Satan. Saturn, Satan, oh, Saturnalia, man. all that good stuff. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, all right, so the first root chakra is located at the base of the spine, and um, it's the support. It's also very grounding, earthy, um, represents the physical body, your feeds your physical needs security, survival, uh, manifestation, material world. And then that's with the root chakra. And that's a big base of how it rules with Capricorn. Um, Cause that's Capricorn is very um, <clears throat> fatherly mm -hmm. rules, restrictions and structure. Well, that's interesting because mentioning, mentioning fatherly and uh, Saturn, but basically religion is based on the worship of Saturn and the sun. And uh, so you, here you have your, your fatherly kind of uh, image and yeah. uh, being the lowest chakra of all, you know, mm -hmm. we have to tithe the the church. Mm -hmm. Well, not me. I don't, I don't no. go to church, but those who do have to tithe and give their money away to uh, become subservient, controlled and conformed. So well, there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry to interject. No, no, that's by all means. I really, I'm just, I'm so happy to be here. Thank awesome. you so much for having me. My pleasure. I'm nervous. No, she's doing fine. <laughs> um, so a lot of this information you can pull up online and, and really help yourself out with it. Um, and there's so much just in depth. It goes into depth beyond what you could fathom, I think. At least it did for me. Um, but okay, so back to Saturn. It sends discipline and rules, regulations. It, it imposes them on us. Even if we don't want to see them, it's going to be like, here are what you need to do. You're going to face it no matter what. And then mm -hmm. you're going to grow. And I had that happen to me in my own experience. So, I mean, especially around this time of year last year, mm -hmm. it's when I was actually had my uh, first awakening. Oh, wow. Yeah. Sure. Or like when I awoke, I mm -hmm. should say. Mm -hmm. So the energies right now are really, really strong mm -hmm. um, and rocking the boat. Yes. Uh, okay. So also you can be seeing the feeling of emotions would be like that of like parents or how teacher or should do's and like regulations that have been put on you. And so you're going to feel that way, like kind of boom, pushed in, like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed, but I have to. Structure, basically. Structure, you yeah. got to do this kind of thing. Yeah. So. You got to fight. You got to go for it. Like, I don't do like it. it when people say, you got to do, you need to do this. I don't like that. Well, that's Saturn. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like Saturn. <laughs> well, it's duality. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you got to have the good and the bad. You can't mm -hmm. just all have a party time mm -hmm. all the time. I mean, I want to. See, I, it was my impression, though. I, I, I thought Saturn was... Um, in the crown chakra, but apparently you're saying it's the root chakra. It's the root chakra. Okay. Yeah, the crown is Jupiter. Okay. Jupiter. Jupiter to get yes. more Jupiter. You know. Okay. 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 <laughs> the kids' fable, the kids' songs. Uh -huh. You know. Um, okay, so then also it reminds us of boundaries, setting those boundaries. Mm -hmm. So within your grounding, um, there are things that you're going to want to admit into your body and 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 your etheric realms and there's not so you have to learn those boundaries you know you set you sage around you or you have your crystals around you it's still setting boundaries you're intentionally putting a, an object to or a thought to hold that space of protection and safety so you're learning in that sense spiritually to do it so therefore you're going to be able to manifest that in your material world okay so also the the root chakra too that's the a lot of times it's the base of our grounding, right? Right. Right. So um, a lot of people, what we end up doing is um, we send the energy, you know, from the cosmic center down through uh, the crown and third eye, throat, heart, sacral, or solar plexus, sacral root, and send it all the way down to the earth and bring it back up and put it out back the other way. So that's really the, the bottom chakra, your lowest chakra, your first three chakras, your root, your solar plexus, or your sacral and your solar plexus. You know, those are the ones that keep you really stuck in this third dimensional reality. You know, and what you really want to do is um, clear the, those so you can really work on the other ones. But ultimately, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, they, they, they think ideally it's ideal to live in the crown or the third eye. 
ideally you want to be in that center right. chakra, the heart chakra. The balance, the harmony. Mm -hmm. And I kind of mentioned this um, before where, you know, once, once the sperm fertilizes the egg, the first thing to grow is the heart and everything grows from it. And the heart has six, over 6,000 times more electromagnetic energy wow. than the brain. So stay in the heart. Stay in the heart. Yeah. You do though. I mean, once you do feel grounded, that's where you're at. Cause you're just at ease. You're mm -hmm. at home. Home is where the heart is. You know, you just get relaxed. It's the same feeling. And getting back to the vertigo thing, you know, I find that when I go to the beach, that's that clears that vertigo while I'm there. I'm, it's non-existent. I do my little walk of gratitude and I go there and man, I feel so good. But once I get back, I might go to the refrigerator and bend over and get something out of it. I'm like, oh gosh. It's, see, and that's where it could be with you is that to for the vertigo within within your crown for you mm -hmm. with the Cancerian um, um, chakra up there, but. That for you is grounding. So you get so high and in your your higher dimensions that whenever you take it and you give it back to Gaia, you know, you take those energies, you ground them into the ground, so mm -hmm. therefore it balances you out and you come out of your into your heart. Mm -hmm. So that I mean that that makes that's logical. Okay. See, it all yeah. makes sense. Yeah. It, does. it does. It all comes together. Um, I have some information on it. Another thing, it uh, <laughs> Uh, Saturn knows no limits, no time, no matter. It doesn't matter. Like if you want it or not, it you're going to be shown these energies. And if you're not knowing what house they're in or what what lines they are within within your system, or even what chakra, down to like at least what energy you know planet is hitting that chakra, you know, so you can have some basis of of what kind of emotional or physical reaction you're going to have that's what you need to know okay and that's simple stuff every day you can just look at you know and just have the chakra chart on your wall and just look at it i'm making ideas for myself by the way so that's <laughs> interesting though that saturn knows no limits of time or matter um which is interesting because saturn is chronos and it, it is all about time it has all the time in the world that right. So it's, it can wait for forever for you to learn these exactly. lessons, basically, you can or the end of time. Go in these loops and go in these loops and go mm -hmm. in these loops. It's, you know, I mean, it, you can even, like, this reincarnation. That's karma right yeah. there. Oh, yeah. That's Saturn. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Saturn. Yeah, right? I missed the old popcorn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, well, if you want, we can move on to the next one. I'm going to grab some more water. Would okay. you like some? Sure. Thank you. All right. I'm going <clears> to <throat> go over a couple of things that I had. Uh, with the root chakra. So issues with your root chakra could be the functioning optimally. If you feel grounded, secure, and at ease and with the world, then you're usually in harmony with your with your root chakra. When that's in harmony, then all the rest of your body will flow. Right? Um, all right, thank you, awesome. You also, to get it in balance, you could go by grounding to the uh, Gaia, going outside, putting some energy into the ground, hugging a tree. You can even go bowling, <laughs> just Yay. getting out there with some physical activity, um, you know, using essential oils like Lang Lang and rosemary, uh, patchouli, sand, sandalwood, myrrh. Um, challenge yourself to, over, to overcome insecurities by, you know, you don't think that you can remember to do a specific task every day. Challenge yourself to do that specific task every day. And that in itself will make you more secure within yourself. So you'll be grounded emotionally. Okay. And there's some stones that they recommend. Oh yeah, some stones are the, the jet and smoky quartz and uh, I can't even pronounce that Hematite. one. Hematite. And do you know this one? <clears throat> yeah. Rondacrosite? Yeah, ro Rondacrosite. Rhoda, Rhoda, Rhoda Rhoda not familiar with that one. Smoky quartz, yeah. Smoky quartz, Love I know smoky quartz. <laughs> Okay, very cool. Awesome. And then um, on to the next one. Mm -hmm. We have the sacral and Venus. So, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. I mean, sacral right there. That mojo, the mojo. real, the real go-getter on um, the energy. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any words on that you want to put in or? Go for it. With me? Okay. So it's the realm of Venus, it's love, emotions, and in astrology, her influence is felt in all of our relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, Venus is the goddess of love, uh, also rulership over Libra and Taurus. Libra. Yeah, Libra, Libra, Libra. Yeah, triple, triple Libra. <laughs> triple Libra. As a result, Venus represents two main areas of our life, love and money. 
So that intuition, that gut check, or if that lack, you know, if, you feel, if you're seeing a lot of lack of abundance or a lack of emotional stability, go to your sacral center, figure it out, because that's where it's at. That's where those blocks are at. It's gonna be a memory or something. And, and the ways to open that up are by having romance in your life, arts, beautifying, the beautification uh, process of self, of gardening, of redecorating your home, of, you know, whatever you want to beautify. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, it also is in the house of entertainment, uh, sensuality, appreciation, love, again, beauty, money, leisure, and attachment to others. So relationships uh -huh. of all sorts. Right, right. Now this is the basically the sexual chakra. Right. Right. The, right. The, it, like you said, the mojo. The mojo. That's where you um, get your mojo. Interestingly, from. too, uh, this time of the year, uh, Venus is known as the morning star. And if you look in the east, um, in the morning, it's going to be the brightest star in the sky. Um, and it doesn't rise, I, I believe it doesn't rise any higher than 18 degrees above the ecliptic. So if here's the horizon, it's only going to be like up here somewhere. So when you go out early in the morning, you're, you're going to see Venus out there in the east. It's beautiful, too. And it's your sparkling in the morning. Oh, yeah. You have, have a picture of her. Yeah. With a dragonfly. Yeah, resting right on the, the, the lanai. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's so beautiful here. I, I really, I love the move. Um, Florida's great. Yeah. Humidity's not bad when you have a lanai. <laughs> yeah. It's green and patio. Otherwise, you know, it's mosquitoes. Yeah. Paradise. It is paradise, and we're on the. I and mean, we can't really complain about like the the Atlantis, the Atlantis and oh, I guess oh yeah, beautiful. We got the uh, Atlantis Stargate just right out there, and right out there. I mean, the beach the is beach. maybe sixty yards away, and I just sit there and I can just play in the sand forever, <laughs> and I do. You know, it's you funny because I noticed that at the uh, at the N five D beach meetup, there's always somebody that covers their whole body <laughs> with sand, and you were one of them. I yeah. needed healing. Yeah. The sand, it's just like it's like cornstarch you know you feel it's like oh kind of like so so uh -huh. powdery it's that powdery uh -huh. and amazing yeah oh look at all that i go rubbing my hands <laughs> messes up sorry y'all i'm uh spiritually inclined yes okay so what <laughs> um, else we have here okay on the sacral side of it okay so within venus you want to look in venus in your chart where you have libra where you have taurus and what house they're in and what even if you want to get deeper go find the degree Go read about what the degree means. That's some info on your what you could expect too. Mm -hmm. um, I just love how everything connects. I'm sorry, y'all, if I keep getting off. So topic. my Venus is in Scorpio uh, at 27 degrees in house two. So you're that's a master number right there, 27 degrees. That's like I've I've coined it. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I'm awesome. a grandmaster. Uh, 27, 28, 29 degrees. 30 is already zero. Awesome. Start right. over again, but um, awesome. yeah. so also know that if you're in the higher, if you have those higher degrees of a sign, not only are you born later in that sign, but you've mastered. Does that usually relate to old souls too? Yes. Is there a correlation there? Um. Well, when we can pin all that down, right? Yeah. Um. I've noticed some correlations. I don't want to like put any probably need more empirical yeah, data to yeah make more that. more data but, but if you had to guess probably um i would say look at your pluto okay look at your pluto um look at your nodes i know there a lot of people don't like to look at that and say that it doesn't matter it's not a planet it's not but it's still an alignment that gives a mathematical answer okay so and when you start noticing it, the clusters and and your pluto and I mean, you know, all of your planets, they can really, they start, tell you all your star seed locations, okay? And uh, this is a whole nother topic. Um, yeah, but, as a matter of fact, yeah, yesterday, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yesterday I ran your chart on one of my programs, Ooh. and uh, we have the identical kind of setup where I'm, she's the first oh, yeah. person that I met that doesn't have any, any uh, planets, planets, retrograde. planets in retrograde. Yeah. Zero planets in retrograde. Yeah, no planets in retrograde. Apparently yeah. that's it's rare. rare, incredibly rare. It's like being a triple Libra. You know, you don't see that very often. You don't see this guy very often. He's awesome though, huh? Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, like it's the, the, the I don't even know what I'm throwing off right now. Hold on. Okay. Center, ground. 
I'm still learning. <laughs> um, like I said, I, I dabble in it, mm -hmm. but the star seeds, uh, your locations of what planets you've incarnated on, um, where you where you your soul tribe is from, mm -hmm. like your family, your star seed family is from. You can look at your degrees and you can go look at the major um, star systems. And if you're in that fluidity of three degrees forward, three degrees back, because mm -hmm. you know the degrees change every um, certain like 60 years or 80 years, depends on what the constellation is, I think something like that. But anyways, if you're fluid three degrees forward, three degrees back, it'll tell you like that's what constellation you're from. And then that's when you know if you're Octarian, Pleiadian, if you're mm. Lyran, if you're- Oh, sweet. Yeah. All of that. It gives you your Atlantean. It, you can get Octaurus. Um, all so of these. I guarantee you down the road when you decide to finally come out and start offering this as a service, people are going to want to know: Am I Lemurian, Atlantean, yes. Pleiadian? You know. So. And how far back you go? Oh, I wow. mean, those are also based on your degree uh -huh. uh, within this the certain I think it's the house that mm -hmm. that it has that degree. I'm not gonna. I, I'm not 100 percent on that one. But you have a cluster, and that's your home base. And then people go even further into that. You can get an in-depth uh, chart reading, okay. the progress cool. chart reading, and that's that's where it's at. They awesome. go deep. Okay. And someone's saying, I can hear you, but I can't see you. Can you guys see us? Are we invisible? <laughs> Did we disappear? Did we disappear? Because <laughs> we're both pretty etheric here. Yeah. It's, yeah. I wouldn't, I, I mean, I wouldn't put it past it. Uh -huh. I'm going to put a little okay. message here. Uh, see me. Can you see us? Hello. I can't even see my message. I, got have buried. Cancer. I have cancer as my rising. We're so behind on. Oh, my Lanta. <laughs> yeah. That, okay. Okay. We're good. We're, We're here. Good. Okay. okay. Sorry, y'all. Sorry. We Where can you get this? Okay. <laughs> here's some of these comments up. here too. Um, Trina Stokes is saying, where can you get this info at? Um, do you want to have your charts read? Okay, so I have peeps that I love. Her name is Maru Matu with Sunstool Astrology. She is the bomb. Um, she offers the starseed charts. And um, until I uh, until I get to that level, I mean, I have, right. I'm not there yet, sure. but eventually soon. Mm -hmm. soon, soon. But Maru Matu with sunsoulastrology.com, she does the starseed charts. Mm -hmm. Also, human design. Um, I, I have a friend, Ashley Pfeffer. You can find her from, I'll, I'll put the link for her up there, but she's doing the human designs right now. So she's doing a very uh, like discounted rate. I think she had it for like awesome. 40 bucks or something, $45. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, that's a great deal too. So here's a question from Catherine Foe. What astro programs do you recommend? You gave me a couple of really good ones yesterday. Yeah, it was planetwatcher.com mm -hmm. and alwaysastrology.com mm -hmm. I use. Um, and, of course, astro.com for the short astro uh, forecast. Yes. Um, watch. I, I go on YouTube and I watch the, the solar flares. So and the reason that I watch the solar flares or started watching the solar flares is to see – what constellation they were oh. getting ignited by. So like say that, you know, Aerie, it, it, we're going through a, a I wanted to simplify this one. Okay, we're gonna go with the next month that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Scorpio, okay. So say it was passing through Scorpio, or Scorpio was passing through the sun. And that's where I wanna look and see if that's gonna ignite the energies and where Scorpio is out of my chart and, and things like that. That's where I feel that the energies are coming through. And then what planet you know is passing by whenever these solar flares uh, happen. And, and those are where the energies are being filtered through. So essentially we're going to be receiving them. You know. And I just posted an article um, a few hours ago. It's called DNA Upgrade. Magnetic pole shift and consciousness. I'm checking it out on my ah, computer here. Yeah. But what it says here is um, on September 6th, there were two X flare uh, X flares ejected. And it usually takes several days for the X flares to reach the planet. And then, of course, several days later, I posted my, in five, or my Facebook um, energy update saying that I couldn't sleep, it's 2.30 a.m. I think I stayed up for like 27 hours in a row wow. after that. those two X flares were um, ejected. So what we're trying to do here 
a lot of us are trying to put these pieces of the puzzle together on how these cosmic energies are affecting right, us in right. so many different ways, whether it's being awake for so, so long. I know a lot of us have also gone the opposite direction of sleeping and yep. napping and clearing, yeah, clearing. That's yeah. clearing house right there. Yeah. If you're, you're finding yourself with fatigue and it's not because you're unhealthy or because you're exhausted from all the stress, then your fatigue's coming in as a, as a, a, you need a cleanse, you need to sleep. You, you absolutely need to be sleeping if you feel the need to sleep. If you needed to cash in some vacation days to sleep, then cash in some vacation days to sleep. Or really don't make any plans that are dedicated so that you can have that time if you need to sleep. Because that's a clearinghouse. Until you understand where these energy lines are at within your your Merkaba and your your human design, then you you need to sleep. And you know, put on some good tunes, some hurts, and or 432 binaural beats. Binaural beats. I like violins. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I. That helps me sleep and all kinds of other things. So we got a comment here too um, from Victoria Long. She says, "I have absolutely no energy, feeling drained." And Victoria, I'm with you. I had to take a nap earlier today. This is one of those one of those downtimes that I'm going through, as opposed to the high energy that I've had beforehand. So. I'm wondering if the moon has something to do with this. Well, of course, the moon is going to flood a lot of energy out right now, especially full with moon. the full moon. Yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 giving out a lot because that's what it is. It's it's fulfilling mm -hmm. and it's giving. So in order to receive, you've got to have room mm -hmm. to receive. So if you're feeling tired or lethargic before the full moon, it's because you need to clear out the old to make room for the new. OK, cool. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. the best way I think I can explain it. So where are we at here on the, oh. the planets? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Distracted. Um, we're still on this. The I don't think I actually had the planet for Venus out. Uh, oh, it said yeah, Venus, Venus is, was, the planet. is the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Poof. That's my Jupiter. That's okay. Poof. Jupiter. I'm like trying not to channel and and be like um, an instructor. Yes. <laughs> so okay. Um, with the with that being Taurus, and it, so it was in the second house and in the seventh house. Those so Taurus and Libra, um, they run the seventh house and the second house. So you'd want to look at the description of the second house and the seventh house and see what those energies and emotions would be, and then you would apply it within. So here's a comment from Rochelle. She says she's been feeling very depressed and anxious as, and she's a Libra. Well, I mean, we, we, we did just get out of Libra. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, we're getting to the higher octaves of letting go and release and bubbling up. And you can only bubble up for so long before you're just like, mm -hmm. because you have to release those energies. If you okay. want to, if it's, if it's throwing a fit, then it's throwing a fit. If it's going underwater and screaming, then go underwater and scream. If it's, you know, whatever that energy is that you're needing to release the inner from the inner child, that's, you know, the like where Libra lies at within your Throw house. a temper tantrum yeah. if you have to, right? So throw a temper tantrum if you have to. <laughs> Seriously, I have. It's not cute. Uh -huh. It's not. You've got to be like under eight to do that. And here's interesting too from uh, Carrie Kogan. She's saying a lot of high anxiety days with little sleep. Aquarius, a fellow, a fellow air sign. Yes, she's on the other side of the spectrum. Uh, it's, different it's just a, yeah, I mean, yeah. it all depends. You got to look at what your rising sign is. You got to mm -hmm. look, which is um, very important. Then you got to look at your sun sign. Uh, and your moon and, and Mercury, where's Mercury at? That's your mind. That's where your mind's going to be at. Um, and what, like what house that's in your house is really relating the planets to what your house, what house it's in. Mm -hmm. That's key. Okay. Um, and I, I know I'm not giving a whole lot of detail in it um, because I'm not 100% equipped with the answers. I'm just going to be honest. So intuitively, what do you what do you say to this question here? Jessica Silva is asking. Besides wanting to sleep, is wanting to eat another ascension symptom? Oh yeah, because it's like yeah, of course it is. You're you're what you're trying to do is suppress mm -hmm. in an emotion, and most not most. Just there's people that suppress with eating. There's some people that suppress with being overly active. Um, anytime that you have an emotion that is 
coming to the surface, you're going to find a way to suppress it. Your ego will. Not you that you want to. It's it's your program, your human program. You know, um, and, and some people eat. And also, whenever you're, you're getting energies and upgrades, your metabolism's higher and you're doing, 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 doing. So you may want some food. So it's double-edged sword. You might also find that when you're eating, you, you may tend to go for the grounding food, food that was actually grown oh, in true. the ground like potatoes. Right, and beets. Yeah, Carrots, sure. things like that. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, over here I got, let's do the next one. So we got... Well, before you mention that, more, more so than not, I'm seeing a lot of people saying that they've been feeling very drained and are taking lots of naps. You know, so I, I think there's, there's a general consensus that is going on. And we're trying to learn from this. So thank you for all the comments. Oh, yeah. Whether you're feeling all those energies or not, this is making these comments is helping us put these pieces of right. the, uh, puzzle together. Right. So this is very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, that's pretty pretty much what I got on that okay. one. That's what I have. I don't. I didn't have a lot on that. But we can go okay. over and talk about things. All right. Easily I don't my rising sign or moon. How do you find that? You, well, yeah, you can go to um, astrology. Astro. Com. Astro. Com. Thank you. Short report. Yeah. And I, the first comment I made, the second comment I made, um, I put a link on there, uh, Carrie. So you can go there and just look up your short report forecast. It'll be on the bottom and you'll see where your sun, uh, moon and, and ascended is, your rising. Right. Yeah. And then um, the website that I use, which was alwaysastrology.com, mm -hmm. in that calculator, once it print, once you pull up your, your birth chart, you can go in there and put in like the uh, progress like where your aspects and all that are at, click on all the boxes and have that pull up and download that because that's going to tell you um, more more details. Okay, so here's a question from Karen Westfall Blake. Any advice for us cancers? Oh yeah, swim with it, man. Swim with it. Swim, swim water with it. sign. Water sign. I mean, that's it. Just easy strokes for easy folks. Just keep going. Yeah. That's it. I mean, you as a cancer, I, I have that as my rising, so it's like ding ding ding. ding. <laughs> um, yeah, you're gonna you're empathic. That's that. Mm -hmm. I mean, your energies are like this, and then you get hit with like earth, and you're like, wait, slow down, you know. So. That's what you got to watch out for are the opposing planets um, and how they react with you. And yeah, no cancer, just go with it. Just let it go like off the shoulder. Just let it go. Roll with the punches to keep pushing through because, you know, your water, you can do that. David Six made a, a comment. He said, all last week I was seeing shadows and apparitions out of my healing eye. I'm curious, David, if those, you know, what kind of apparitions? Did you feel like they were negative entities or uh, benevolent beings? Because I've noticed that probably since the beginning of August, near the Lionsgate time, essentially, I've been seeing more beings out of the corner of my eye and picking up on more entities, but they're all benevolent so far for me. So I'm curious what you're seeing. Yeah, I've, um, I've had a lot of entities uh, since the gateways. Mm -hmm. and. You get, it's you don't even realize it when when you at, at first unless you're like really like amazing at this. But mm -hmm. as a newbie, um, you don't really notice it until like a couple of days, and you're like, or a day, you're like, why am I feeling so funky? Like, mm -hmm. what is it? And you're like, this isn't something that I would even do, like ever be mad at. So recognize it, and then release. Here's one from Kendra Taylor Murray. Fellow Taurus here with Gemini Moon Scorpio Rising. Any advice? Okay, uh, Taurus, good, good. I mean, you're gonna have a, a lot of energy coming through here with the rest of the fire signs with Gemini Moon. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> a lot of energy up and down. Of, yeah, a lot of. Um, you're gonna have to take the twins and yep. put them in timeout yep. <laughs> because your emotions are gonna be. Yes and 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 no and <laughs> at the same time at the same time <laughs> and that's fluid. it's going to be like this up and down up and down up and down and that's down. fluid yeah. yeah yeah so that's you know honestly just just take it one day at a time one minute at a time and just keep 
Maybe, maybe uh, do you have a picture or something that you can keep on you or a, a watch that your mother gave you, your father gave you, just some kind of material object that can help you maintain the balance when you see it. Oh, like I need to maybe wear both like two long earrings or something to help you remind you to keep yourself in harmony. Awesome. That's yeah. great advice. Um, thank you, Kendra. And thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Um, Okay, Sonia, Sonia Finch says, um, I keep seeing purple energy coming off my eyes in the night and healing energy shooting out of my hands. Not sure if this is new or I've only just noticed. Well, that is the, the purple energy at night. When I see that at night, that's that's my third eye opening. That was the beginning stages of my third eye opening. And I'd see that some, some people it might be that swirling white light and some people it's blue and purple, but tune into that and just the idea is to get into that alpha state where your brain is just about ready to fall asleep and all of a sudden that that purple light will turn into figures and you'll tune into it a lot more easier the more you practice it but once you can get to that point of holding that alpha state and being able right. to get to that point of having it you can be on, on the beach in the middle of a thousand people out there and it can only be you when you finally get to that alpha state um, so just keep working on that that's forward. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I've had the energy. Um, mm -hmm. You clap it. Oh, yeah. And then you feel, yeah. you feel the Quantum energy. Quantum touch. Yeah. yeah. I've had that. And um, to have the actual visualization of the energy coming out, kudos to you. Yes. Sending kudos. you energy. Yeah. yeah. Send us all some energy. Yeah. Spark it up. Baby. Yeah. Let's bring it on. Uh, it is a little cold in here. That's huh? <laughs> Florida. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> Um, okay, so what else do we have here? Know, Angel, Angel's no more than Angie. Good, yeah, good, okay. good, you know, and, and that's also a big deal of what you relate to, um, as well. The angels and, and Kendra's saying, Yeah, that's how I feel. Hello, up and down, <laughs> all, yeah, but not all the time. But, no, yeah. no, you, you got it. It would suck. Just constant. That's a retro, that's a Mercury retrograde, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Downward spiral. You're so, yesterday. Yes. Yes. Uh, Kat, Karen's saying that she's seen spirits since she was five years old. That's awesome. Yeah. Some people, they walk in with their eyes, their eyes wide open, all three mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, fortunate ones or and, I started seeing, I started seeing spirit and my friends, I think I was that I can recall we were like nine. We'd sit there and just stare at each other and hold hands and we just, it was like we started out by not blinking and then that's when I started realizing that people's faces were changing to people mm -hmm. they were changing to oh yeah that's, that's similar to the third eye mirror meditation where you just you put a candle in front of you yeah. turn off all the lights and stare at your third eye and you'll see your your body metamorphosize into all sorts of people male female right who knows past lives yeah. past spirit um mm -hmm. reincarnations aspects of yourself celestial yeah. i mean oh, that's yeah. deep you want to have some fun with it at home but get your best bud yeah <laughs> well sit down. you might want to uh, protect yourself in the room in the area oh. beforehand from malevolent entities see and, i'm i'm so bright side and bushy tail with with the with that cause I, like i said i did it a lot as a child um, uh -huh. so it doesn't intimidate me right i think of it more of like what do you want to know you know so the, there is an article on n5d what to do before you meditate and you could apply that to something like that as well so let's see what else here uh, I was hit, this is from Gracius. Gracius. gracious gracious maria i was hit with a wave of fatigue and anxiety out of the blue last night and for what seemed to be no reason and and has been with me ever since before that i felt quite full of energy i am a capricorn Oh, that's that's your that's the moon, my love. Mm -hmm. That's the moon is ruled by Capricorn any day of, right. of the of the of the month. So, um, if you're and you have Capricorn, anytime the moon's switching into a uh, phase, mm -hmm. and right now it's going to that full phase, you're going to feel the fluidity of the energies that are coming from, like the transition, what um, zodiac sign that it's coming out of. Okay. So it's really, it, I, I know that my, my explanations are a little more vague, but. Oh, it's perfect. It's I my love it. understanding Simple, the simpler, it. the better. I, love I, I it. really always go back to the book because it's, it's also about how you feel um, and what situations are coming in your life. Pay attention to the, the repeated events, like right now specifically, like, Scorpio, like we said earlier, he is done. He is tired and he is in Capricorn and he is looking at you like, look, we're getting done. I bleep myself. Yeah, we're no, getting stuff yeah. done. And 
I'm getting up to help you do it. So you're going to have that extra push as a Capricorn and Capricorn being like a sun, moon or rising in Capricorn. You're going to have that extra push from the moon within the energies from Pluto. So extra. <laughs> so here's a couple of Aries. Uh, Tish, Tisha, Tisha, Kenzie Fry, Aries with Leo rising, Pisces moon and Erlene Walker. Hi, I'm Aries. Hey, advice. Oh, we're just coming into your sign. So you're at the lower, um, you're at the lower degrees. So you're not going to have to worry. It, I, I don't, you know, each person is different because it depends on what houses it's playing in, um, in your emotional life or in your career again. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but you're going to notice this if you just look at it, take a second, step back and go, why am I feeling this way? And then you're going to go, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then you acknowledge it and then you let it go. Like, I'm not going to do that anymore. Like, that's not what I'm, I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going to live on this light path of ascension. I'm going to right these wrongs that I have in my, my body so that I feel free of all this baggage. <laughs> that's pretty much what it is. Um, but, you know, I mean, to each is their own and how they, how they do it. Obviously, you can see I'm more of like a a sort of aggressive person. I just want to go hung and push through it. Yeah, I just posted um, on here, uh, houses in your birth chart. So just check that out and you can find out you know, what that meaning is for each house in your birth chart. And if you can't find it um, through here, just go on N5D, um, type in on the search box, uh, houses in birth chart, and you'll find the whole article. Oh, thank you. Okay, so David said that the entities are benevolent. That's good. Other than, has anybody else been feeling um, their dreams more so become, I've been dealing with a lot of deja vu. Hmm. Um, like, oh, I've done this before kind of thing. Like, or did we move here like, you know, two lifetimes ago? Because it feels like so natural and just aha moment, like thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, I, has anybody else been feeling that? I've had... Um, a lot of energies, especially now coming into the galactic uh, Pleiadian uh, Stargate like portal. It's, mm -hmm. That's in November again, by the way. They do it biannually. Um, I know, like I know the Pleiadians. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a Stargate that, that opens up. It's also a powerhouse number. Mm -hmm. I'm finding that, I don't know about you, but I, I sleep for like an hour, hour and a half, and I wake up, go back to sleep, wake up. You sleep all night or? No, I'm like, I am in um, lucid dream anymore. I'm I'm actually I yeah my um been getting out of bed and like or I'll find myself like just sitting up like I'm rubbing lotion on or like I'm scratching or like I'm just in the middle of your sleep to wake up in your sleep yeah wow and I'm like getting up doing things um like I Did you say you're like rubbing your husband one time or yeah something? I was rubbing his back and then yeah. I was I didn't even know he's like yeah. honey you don't have to do that I'm like I didn't even know I was. <laughs> You know, um, so, yeah, so consider it even in yeah, my sleep, right? Sleep you're working. Yeah. I am. But that's, I've been well, having a lot that. of the action, like, within the energy, so I feel it. Yeah. I do. I actually had, and it's rare for me to have a bad dream. I had a bad dream a couple nights ago, and I was trying yeah. to piece it together, and I think I did, and the who's, what's, and why's, but um, it's all been resolved, and everything's moving forward. See, that's it, and that's what all this is. So, I mean, honestly... It's how we're personally dealing with it. It's where it resides in our our energy lines, in our body, you know, and I just wanted to give you guys this this information. Like I said, it's it's a bunch of everything that we've all heard of and it's just kind of bringing it all together to simplify it, you know. Um, the, everybody offers this, that, and the other, and it's not put together. So when I was waking up, I wanted to know everything and I was like, well, this has got to be this and that's got to be that. So, but then it let my guide, my higher self would just boom, another thing, boom, another thing, boom, another thing. So I wanted to bring it all together to help people waken because mm -hmm. it's, it's a journey. It is. Check out this comment from Sonia Finch. My daughter was chatting in English in her sleep at two months old to invisible people at night. Wow. That's awesome. It would stop as soon as I went, as soon as I, well, I think she meant. Or my in. mom went into. Yeah, as soon as I or my mom went into the room. Okay. Very, very odd. Odd. Yeah. 
Yeah, star seeds, though. Two months, yeah. At star seeds, though. Oh, yeah. Advanced DNA. Yeah. Indigo crystals. Where do you think they get these movies from? Come on, people. Like, the the books, the the movies they come out with. Like, we know this. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying people to us. I mean, like, the (laughs) collective. Like, wake up already. These movies come out, and we're like, oh, that makes sense. Because, no joke, it does make sense. Okay, here's one for you. My vertigo, dizziness, nausea started... In May, and it repeated in July and August every time, five days in a row. My neurologist prescribed drugs, drugs for epilepsy and dementia. But I feel it's just about higher self-integration. I'm Sagittarius mm. slash Capricorn. Yeah. Um, uh, any thoughts? Yeah. Personally, um, Sagittarius Capricorn, that's my uh, sun and moon. So those, yeah. I can't, I, I mean, I don't want to tell somebody to or not to take yeah, drugs, I and mean, that's your choice. Yeah. I don't. Um, I've been proclaimed this, that, or the other by doctors and just mm-hmm. looked at the medication and said, why? So I can be on some other cloud and not know who I was. That's it. It's your ego personally fighting, you know, your subconscious, your higher self. You know, who's going to win the battle? Who do you want to win the battle? Your higher self, your best version of you, or the program that you were told to be or not to be? I'm going to go with the person that I love to be. Um, and that, was, for me personally, was to not take drugs um, or prescribe medications. I call those drugs. Herbs are not drugs. Herbs are God-given and grown. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but on that note, with with the, what, is, what did she say? The nausea, the dizziness, and vertigo. Yeah. I, I just said, I, I, everybody deals with it differently. Um, we do have it in the same houses. Um, but not to the extent of the degree. I feel it more within my waking moments and my energies because I'm lagging and doing. I, I need. I feel I have a need to do, do, do. That's also the Cancerian in me um, in organizing. But for you, you could be feeling it with the loss of things and thoughts, and that causes somebody to get off balance and get dizzy because you're just spinning in emotion. So and nausea, hmm, spearmint, <laughs> spearmint oil. You can hold, what What one's for nausea? I think it's jade, jade helps with nausea. Oh gosh, oh, what um, is that I'm thinking of and I can't think of, echinacea, is it? Even citrine would be great, that mm-hmm. helps with everything. It's a great cleanser. Here's one that could use your help. I'm can Aries you know? Libra rising, I just quit my job and trying to do something more creative. Well, that's Sonia again. I just go for a, go for a drive, go for a walk, mm-hmm. go do something by yourself, and experience your thoughts. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to start for your creativity block. And please forgive me, I'm like so far behind on these comments. Oh. Right here. <laughs> that's a deja vu. It's really hard to keep up with everybody. Hello. I think we're caught up. Yes. Oh, there it is. Ginger and peppermint. Oh, yes. Yes. See? Ginger for nausea. Mint yep. tea. Excellent. Mint. I love it. I love it when you guys are talking amongst yourselves and creating friendships. I highly right. recommend that you know if you're really getting uh, making a great connection with anyone here that's on the chat, send them a friend request. You know, get to know each other yeah. a little bit better. Maybe you live in the same area or have a friend that lives in the same area that's awake and they don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I just moved here uh, a month ago, a little over a month ago, and it it's not always easy finding an awake person to talk to. It's not, yeah. but when you do, it's, it's really amazing. So don't forget about that human contact and connection. Cause that's, that's really big. We actually, that's how we met was yeah. actually through a video I made on, on, on YouTube. Right. And you contacted me and yeah. yeah, we were talking about the mutation of our DNA Yeah. and I had um, actual proof um, from my DNA uh, mutating. Uh-huh. And, and you wanted to get in contact with, our friend With Rosie. Our friend Rosie, right? Uh-huh. So. And I seen, and it happened to be a synchronicity as well that yeah. I was told to look for. And and when he said the name Rosie, which was my boop, that's it. And mm-hmm. it happened to be on seven seventeen. No, it was yeah seven. It was what seven seventeen. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah seven seventeen at at fifteen seven at seventeen seventeen. So five seventeen is whatever mm-hmm. he called. Okay, or, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. To me, it was like, woohoo! Uh-huh. Exciting. Oh my gosh. So much stuff. I know. It's been going by quickly. And 
I can definitely throw out those the website again for the the star seed chart again was with Sun Soul Astrology Maruma too, and I think she picked up another person um, on her channel, but amazing. Karen Westfall says I've seen floating sparkles outside since I was mm. little. Doctor says there is no scientific way I can possibly see that with a naked eye. Not what are these sparkles? Read. Not with the books that he read. Oh, no, no, no. They don't teach metaphysical no. stuff in medical school. No, they don't. That would just be a big money loss for them. What do you think the sparkles are? Um, hopefully, I, hopefully not chemtrail residue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck. Yeah, it would. No, I, honestly, I think it's, um, it's the energies because you're starting to see them. Yeah. Because I, I see them all, mm -hmm. all the time. I don't I don't even worry. I, he, I actually told my husband and my friends, I'm like, but I see like little dots in the, in, in the sky. I'm like, what is wrong? And my husband's like, you're going crazy. And I'm like, maybe. Well, I know, wasn't. you know, since I was a kid, I've always had floaters, which are different. It's just protein deposits on the eye. Um, but I think what she's saying and what you're saying are, are completely different. These are yeah. sparkles, um, bits of energy, light energy, photons, perhaps. Well, and that's the thing. It's like when the sun, and anybody can debate this with all day long, but um, when the sun's coming down or going up or just directly on and you have any moisture in the air, you can see the moisture and the movement, right? And the energies. Okay, we see that whenever the wind blows down a tree. It's the same thing with those little sparkles. It's energy. You're just mm -hmm. seeing it being pushed and swayed through. Mm -hmm. And it's shining, reflecting off of the moisture is what I've kind of narrowed it down to my own science, right? Okay. So we got to prove things for ourselves, right? I believe it. Works for me. <laughs> well, we probably should wrap this up, seeing how it's gone over an hour already. And um, oh wow, really? Yeah, yeah. We've been wow, on for you guys. an hour and six minutes. But before we go, um, in November, I'm having a uh, another in five D beach meetup. Actually, I'll, I'll be having one um, in uh, on Saturday, October twenty first. It will be my next one. But in November, we're having one on. 11 11 which is a saturday also and uh it, this one's going to be called the cosmic convergence uh, beach meetup and you got some ideas of what to do for it on this make yeah. it a little different and special well the you know uh, since we're doing it on a, on a the we're, it's a portal open well it's a celebration know? basically yeah. of the, uh, uh, the the sarasota atlantis stargate that's yes. right here um, right on the beach right there so um so i was getting in contact with a few friends i would love to invite whoever would like to come we're gonna have live music dj working on that right now mm -hmm. um i'm having some friends hopefully uh, other other tarot readers um other astrologists trying to get them to fly in from all parts of the country i am a zumba enthusiast so i have a quite a few girlfriends in the Zumba community that cool. are going to be shaking and dancing, having a great time. So I really want it to be more of a party, party and have a great time and celebrate these yeah. energies because that's what we really need right now. We need some positive energy danced into Gaia. 11-11. 11-11. On the Siesta Key Beach here in Sarasota, Florida. So hopefully you guys can check it out and be here and be part of the celebration. Take in all these awesome energies. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very yes. much for having me on uh, N5D. I feel very privileged to be here. My and pleasure. Learning and yeah. I'm sure you'll be getting to know everyone here um, a little bit more as I do more Facebook lives. I'm sure I'll have you back on with I me. Would, I would appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. So bring some more some more goodies to the table, and I yes. will have a link next time to. Mm -hmm to some of this. Well, what you can do is actually just go back through the archives and when you say the links, just put them in there. So, yeah. Oh, see, I, I haven't done a Facebook live. I'm like been in my little Cancerian shell. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, absorbing awesome. knowledge. So thank you everyone for joining us here. Namaste and I'll see you the next time. Bye. Bye.